Hello and welcome to International Daily Roundup from People's Dispatch, where we bring you the top news items from across the globe. Our headlines. Saudi rights activist Lujain al Hatoul released from prison. Burmese security forces escalate crackdown as anti-coup protests continue. Philippine Supreme Court holds second day of hearings against anti-terror law. Student protests continue across Greece ahead of vote on contentious education bill. Prominent Saudi rights activist Lujain al Hatoul has been released from prison. al Hatoul was released on February 10th after spending nearly three years in detention. However, her family has reported that al Hatoul will be placed under probation for three years and is banned from traveling outside the country for five years. Her family and rights groups also repeatedly stated that al Hatoul was subjected to severe physical and psychological forms of torture while in prison. In prison activists, including al Hatoul, were reportedly subjected to electric shocks, flogging, and sexual assault. However, Saudi courts have dismissed the claims on multiple occasions, including as recently on February 9th. A special criminal court had sentenced al Hatoul to five years and eight months in prison in December 2020. She was convicted on charges relating to seeking to change the Saudi political system and harming national security. The court suspended two years and 10 months of her sentence in addition to the time already served since her arrest in 2018. Al Hatul had extensively campaigned for the women's right to drive and had publicly opposed the Saudi law of male guardianship over women. News of Al Hatul's release was first announced by her sister Lina on Wednesday night local time. Lina al Hatul went to say, quote, Lujain is not home, but she is not free. The fight is not over. She also demanded the release of all political prisoners. At least a dozen of other women's rights activists had been detained along with al Hatul amid a widespread crackdown in 2018. For our next story, we look at Myanmar, where daily protests against a military coup have continued as tens of thousands of people continue to step out into the streets. Teachers, industrial workers, government employees, and healthcare workers are participating in the civil disobedience movement in large numbers. As the protests continue to grow, the military has started implementing a series of restrictions across cities and townships. These include a ban on public gatherings of over five people and motorized processions, as well as a curfew from 8 p.m. to 4 a.m. Security personnel have also escalated the use of force during protests. Police have deployed tear gas, water cannons, and rubber bullets at protest sites. Reports of police firing warning shots, as well as live rounds, have also been circulated. A woman has also been hospitalized after being shot in the head during a protest in the capital city on February 9th. Maya Thuy Thuy Kaying is currently in critical condition and has reportedly lost significant brain function. Amnesty International has verified reports of shootings and has stated that Burmese security forces deployed machine guns against protesters. Amid domestic and foreign calls for the restoration of the civilian government, individual countries have also initiated a series of measures against the military leaders. New Zealand announced a suspension of high-level political and military contact with Myanmar on February 9th. The country will also impose a travel ban on Myanmar's military leaders and exclude projects associated with its military from its aid program. U.S. President Joe Biden has also approved an executive order to impose sanctions on military leaders responsible for the coup. Biden announced on February 10th that the sanctions would also extend to their family members as well as business interests. The U.S. government is also taking steps to block the military from accessing $1 billion of Burmese government funds held by the U.S. The second day of hearings against an anti-terror law were concluded in the Philippines on February 9th. 13 lawyers are representing 37 petitions against the contentious law in Philippine Supreme Court. The second day of hearings focused on how the new law removed protections previously afforded to those accused or convicted of a crime. Lawyers argued that the language of the new law would render the writ of habeas corpus ineffective. This is because the law allows for a person to be detained for up to 24 days without a warrant. Law enforcement agencies will only require authorization from the Anti-Terrorism Council which would have to be an extrajudicial body. Petitioners also argue that the law does away with monetary compensation provided to those acquitted of terror charges. The anti-terror law supersedes the Human Security Act, which had set a compensation of around $10,000 for every day spent wrongfully imprisoned. 
the Supreme Court also rejected a plea made by two people from the indigenous Eta community to be included in the petitions. Jaipur Gurung and Junior Ramos were the first people charged under the anti-terror law and have been in prison since August 2020. According to reports, they were arrested while trying to evacuate from their ancestral lands, which had been subject to continuous military operations. The third day of hearings has been scheduled for February 16th. For our final story, we go to Greece, where students are continuing their protests against a contentious education bill proposed by the conservative, new democracy-led government. The bill will implement increased surveillance measures on university campuses, including police patrols. The Greek parliament is due to vote on the bill on February 11th. In the meantime, here is a video feature on the protests. for our schools, we say no to police, we say that no students will be cut off educations, we say that we will continue fighting and we accept uh, no police brutality and threats. Δεν υπάρχουν πόροι και δεν υπάρχουν υποδομέ στο ελληνικό πανεπιστήμιο. Η κυβέρνηση επιλέγει να δίνει λεφτά μόνο για την αστυνομία και για την πειθαρχία των φοιτητών. Αυτό το νομοσχέδιο, οι φοιτητέ ε, λένε ότι δεν πρόκειται να εφαρμοστεί σε καμία περίπτωση και θα μείνει στα χαρτιά. Thank you for watching People's Dispatch and check out our website at peoplesdispatch.org.